Kicks off to a great start with a 235 score and $900 in earnings, and he awaits the winner of this matchup, and it's terrific. Jack Way out of the Let's Bowlerama in Calgary, and Danny Hawkins from Club Lever Andre in the Chatelaines in Winnipeg. And Jack Way, the number five seed in this tournament, with one of the most impressive resumes in Canadian bowling, will get us started for $100 a frame in this preliminary round match. Jack has been bowling for 35 years. And now Danny Hawkins with a high game of 287. I like the composure of this young man. He has bowled very well. He's got a high back swing. He's got lots of action. And a seven pin to deal with, and he's down a frame already to Jack Way. First hundred dollars goes to the Calgarian. Hawkins is very strong. He's the arm back up there sets himself up very well. The point of release executes right straight on through. Switching equipment, he's got himself a red bowling ball that he's trying here. This ball will hook more. You notice that he's turning it under. Not quite as much as Howard Kashi, but right here is where he gets it. The revolution's going. On. And he's going to make it. You bet. That pin came right all the way across from one side to the other and carries it up. As long as the machine doesn't touch it, it's okay. Watch what happens. Comes in there with full power. Watch the pin from the right-hand side. The six pin went into the channel, came out, came back on over, and hit the pin on the left there for him. What a break. And so Jack Clay comes back up now, needing a strike to force a carryover. Playing the second frame, has a value of $100. Got them all. Hooked a little narrow when he let it go, but he got the good pin action. He's got two strikes on the board, and we've got the first carryover of this first round match. Go to the third frame and play it for $200. We're into the third frame in this first round matchup featuring Jack Way from the Let's Bowlerama in Calgary. Matched up against Danny Hawkins who plays at Club Lever Andre in the Shadow Lanes in Winnipeg. And there's the report card through two frames. Jack Way won the first, carry over in the second, play the third frame for $200. Important ball here. He's on two strikes in a row. He's looking for his third and he's got it. He's also got impressive credentials. He's the first bowler ever in history to bowl a perfect game during the World Cup. The form tells it all. He's nice and smooth. Watch the roll on the bowling ball as he gets to the line. He lofts it out there a little bit. See the ball turning, 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 and there's the results that he was looking for. The other end, his opponent right here, Dan, has got all sorts of power in that ball, and he's responded the way he wanted Strike for strike. Penny Hawkins, 1992-93 TSN Youth Bowling Classic champion. See the difference in the rotation. The, the revs on the bowling ball, and he gets the pins going horizontal a little bit more than Jack is. However, Jack's got three in a row. And it, this young man right here had a spare, and now he's got two in a row. Fourth frame worth $300. Watch the explosiveness of the pins as it hits down on the other end. Well, not quite that way. Three, six, ten remains. He, these two met in the first round of last year's series. And Danny Hawkins won that match seven frames to three. And then Danny went to the quarterfinals and lost to Howard Kachi, the eventual champion. Spare on the board in the fourth for Dan Hawkins. You were talking about Jack Way and the two perfect games at the World Cup. Put that into perspective. That's the best in the world. Showed up 
first in uh, Sao Paulo, and then uh, actually the first one was in 94 in Mexico when he bowled his first perfect game. But that's the best competition in this sport in the world that he was competing with there. Well, it's recognized as the top amateur because it gets to select bowlers from every country. And Gway is showing why. He gets into a rhythm and uh, lined up, and he's so loose with his game and so confident with his game right now that he he doesn't have, have to worry about margins of error. He just gets up there and challenges the pin. See him in there? He's strong. Works at a uh, plant manager in Quality Meats in Calgary, and he'll uh, turn around and he works hard. He uses his hands every day. Bowling about 20 games a week, carrying a very respectable average back home. He knows what to do with it. Well, he's got four in a row. And he's got four frames in a row. That last strike worth $300. Back into the pins. Five up, five down. And there's a little excitement in the room. He's thrown perfect games before. People can feel the emotional level rising here just a little bit. Danny Hawkins knows he's in a dogfight here. He's got to win some frames, and the only way he can do it is throw some strikes. Well, there's one. That'll force a carry over to the sixth frame. So we'll play the sixth for $200. Look at the difference in the style. Now, here's where he gets all his power. He just puts everything into it at the knee band there, everything wrapping around, and he gets the pins splattering all over the place. I like the idea that he came out of the youth event. He won the TSN $1,000 scholarship, and is now going to become a carpenter. And he's hoping he can put a few joints together down here on the other end with the pin and the, everything going. Ah, look at that pin. Look at that pin and the power in there. They're so strong when he hits there. I think it's marvelous that he's going to go in. He, he wants to learn the uh, carpentry trade and become a worker out there and we use his hands a lot. He's uh, looking forward to taking advantage of the scholarship that TSN put up. On. Now that was a bit of a mistake. He's not too happy because it leaves it wide open for Gway, who really hasn't had any uh, left anybody any chance here right now. We do not give somebody like Goy a chance like that. No, he can clinch a berth in the next round. If he can beat a nine count here in the sixth frame, he is perfect through five. He's been there before. I see him talking to himself, takes a breath just before he leaves, gets down in there, gets that little timing motion of his. Just nice, smooth, and easy, and there you go, six in a row. And he's going to the quarterfinals. He's going to play the defending champion, Howard Kachi. That might be fun. It'll be fun for us sitting up in here. Now, Absolutely. the interesting thing about Jack is that he's got this bowling ball that he's been using, and he's been working with it, and he's so confident and so loose and uh, relaxed in it. And I don't think you ever get nonchalant about getting perfect games, but certainly after you get six of them and the, under the pressure situation he has, it starts to get a little easier. Let's see if he can get his seventh. He's going to be very close. I was, think he thought he missed it. He was inside. He came right over. You see him indicate there he came right over the top of it because he wanted to make sure of it. Watch what happens there. He knows that he's inside a little bit, and he thinks, oh, wow. He's at an 830 triple, 1379 for uh, the uh, five games. That's stratospheric scoring. He's en route to beat our high single that we've ever had. Ron Tibbet with a 268 from Edmonton in the first year of the series, 1987-88. Ron had a 268 score that year. Danny Hawkins just smiles and says, well, this isn't quite my day, and I haven't been all that bad, but Jack's on a tear. And now we've got two nine counts by Dan in the sixth and seventh frames. He's lost the seventh as well. Jack so far has been perfect. He's won all the money. 
Well, you get to a point in a game like this where you know your opponent's got you, you know, by the juggler, and you're just going to go through the motion and get out of the road and hopefully see him carry right on because he knows he's got it and he's beat in this game. So Jack just sitting back there swinging his hand trying to stay loose with it. Not too happy with his last shot. This young man has got a great future. Oh, that's seventh hand. <laughs> now that is sheer power. In the game... The game today is power and uh, power shots with a lot of these young people. And watch this. He executes everything perfect and just blows the rack here and everything goes over. You see that pin, it, instead of hitting the seventh pin on the left side, it ended up way over on the right-hand side. These youngsters will bowl about five, six strikes in a row, I see, and then they'll miss about three singles here. <laughs> and the big cheer is for his fair after two nine counts and six and seven. So... Jack Way, if you just joined us, perfect through seven. I'll tell you one thing. If he gets the next one, it'll be tough. Because the eighth one, the ninth one, and then he's he is locked in. But it, as long as he can get through this one right here, because he wasn't too happy, he topped the bowling ball a little bit. Let's see if he stays behind it enough and reaches to it. He's going to be close. You betcha. Eight consecutive strikes. A marvelous tribute to the talent of this man, and thanks to Hiram Walker, TSN, and the bowling proprietors, we're seeing a potential superb game here. What a Eight winning combination. $800. Eight strikes. <laughs> and Jack is standing there yapping, and when he gets talking, that's when you've got yourself, you know he's locked in, because when he's thinking about it. He doesn't talk too much. When he gets going into his game, he gets going tells everybody about it. Now, this is his ninth strike he's going for. He's going to be close. You betcha. We have our first nine in a row. This young man is just going to go through the motions. We'll have to find out what the uh, award will be here because it could very well happen. He is so locked in right now. Now here's a young man. Well, for a, hole in, for a hole in one, a golfer has to buy a round. Now, is there an equivalent for a. Well, we'll just reestablish well, that we rule. Can, we can do that. We can do our rule. We're, we're on air. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> now, here's a man that has done everything right but hasn't got any results. Catherine Plummer, daddy's girlfriend, she's kind of caught up in the moment as well. Just says, hey, he hasn't done that in five years. This is one of those days. Four, nine up here. You know, like I said, he's trying to do is go through the motions, get out of the road. He knows he's beat. He just wants to see your opponent do everything. Do it right. Zach is pretty loose with his game right now. He's either going to get the perfect game or he's going to hang a single pin up here. Nine in a row. And they've been good hits. In fact, on the last ball, Jack was making a comment as he released it. Oh, well, I like that. Now, can he keep his head into the game? <laughs> I tell you, Hawkins has done everything right. He's got the ball out there, all power strikes. You know, we're not his forte today. And he leaves a beautiful hit there. And all you can do is you got to take... Give him full marks. He's taking it in good humor. He shakes his head, and he knows his day will come. This is deja vu. He won last year, and Jack's getting back at him, but with a vengeance. Yeah. Made the spare in the 10th frame, Dan Hawkins. Used to be the odds are, and, and I've got one of the 300 rings on here, but the odds used to be about a million to one when you'd have a perfect game. Bill Bristow, manager of Aurora Bowl, among those sitting here smiling and watching. Probably uh, looking forward to seeing what Jack can do here, like we all are in the 10th frame, as soon as Danny's done with his last ball of this match. Well, the 300 game is a rarity. You get a diamond ring for it. You get a lot of prestige, and Jack has been there six prior times. 
There you are. That's mm -hmm. as good as it gets. Nine frames one, nine strikes. Jack Quay to the line. Needs to beat an 18 count in the 10th frame to sweep the money. I don't really think he cares. About I don't think he does either. What he's trying to do is get his head into it. He's trying to set it up for himself. He might care about the money when he hears about our rule, though. Well, let's see what happens here. He's going for his seventh perfect game. First of all, a rarity to ever see one, and Come to get on, it on television would right. be something else. He's got the first ten in a row. He's locked into this game. He's got the carry that he wants, and it's nice to see that he's able to keep his head into it. This is a tough scenario. I want to tell you, this is the ball that counts right here, the 11th one. If you can get through the 11th strike, then he can start relaxing just a little bit. It's, it, you know, it's one of those things where he's probably, the, 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 the perfect games he's had in the last, uh, over the years, uh, he's probably thrown in a bowling center where every lane is busy, and, you know, a few people kind of get into it, but everybody else is doing their own thing. Here he's got 50 or 60 people. He's outside. Focused solely on him. He's outside, but he got away with it. That time around, he got a little bit of a break on that, but he's got the first 11 strikes in a row. Now, the one thing that might stop him could be a four pin. But I like the way he's... I like it when he's yapping. I, I mean, his man, when he gets wound up, he starts talking a mile a minute. And we're... He's going to buy all the drinks. That was what he was just saying. He's going to buy the drinks for everybody. He's going for the seventh perfect game, the first time in history that we'll have seen it on the TSN game. It's a rarity to ever get this close. He'll be running this one up. This is a fantastic shot coming up for him, and he's going to be there. You betcha. The perfect game Isn't on TSN. that nice? Isn't that terrific? A standing ovation, and rightfully so, to be able to watch that on television and have it on tape. There's a keeper, folks. Seventh perfect game. What an accomplishment. And to do it as comfortable and to know that this is the ball that does it right here. Watch how relaxed it is all the way through. A ball going in there. He's got a bit of a break on the 11th, but this one is all the way through. Bang. 12 in a row. A perfect game, the first on TSN. And we got a quarterfinal coming up against Howard Kachi. We'll be back.